The tools we'll be using to draw with in this class are the paintbrush and the blob brush, which was introduced in CS4. First, we'll take a look at the paintbrush tool. I'll select the paintbrush and go over to my brushes panel and click a calligraphic tip to select it and then draw. The paintbrush takes its color from the stroke color I have set in my color panel. And the paintbrush lays down a path with anchor points as I draw, just like the pencil tool. And here's what the path looks like in outline mode. It's natural and it follows the movements you make with your tablet or mouse. The shortcut for the paintbrush is B, and to set its options, just double click on the paintbrush in the tool panel and the dialog box appears. These tolerance settings for fidelity and smoothness make the paintbrush really versatile. The line I just drew had a fidelity setting of 4 pixels, meaning it was faithful to my movement on the tablet within a tolerance of 4 pixels. And the smoothness is set at 20%, so Illustrator was adding some smoothing to the path as I drew it. Now if I move the sliders to the absolute lowest settings, the line I draw with the brush tool will most accurately represent my motions on the tablet. So this is as accurate as you can get. But that also means that Illustrator will plot out every wobble you make as you draw, and it adds more anchor points along the path to do this. And you can see all these little anchor points here in outline mode. And I can compare absolute accuracy on the right to some Illustrator added smoothness and a looser fidelity tolerance on the left. So back to my options. I like to adjust these two settings, fidelity and smoothness, depending on what I'm drawing and how much accuracy I need. If I'm tracing something or drawing anything with detail, letters or that sort of thing, my sliders will be closer to the left side and the numbers will be lower. If I want to create very smooth swashes and swirls, or script lettering, or if my hand is feeling a little shaky, I'll adjust the numbers higher to draw with fewer anchor points. So we'll revisit these two settings again as we work in this class. And I also suggest working with these checkboxes too. Keep selected will keep the last line you drew selected. So this can be very convenient. For instance, if I'm drawing lines, trying to get just the right gesture, and this is something I do a lot. You know, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. So having keep selected checked makes it easy for me to draw and delete quickly. Just hitting the delete key and trying again. And so when you look at a piece of art and you wonder how somebody made it look so effortless, this is probably part of their process too, just over and over again until you find the right line. The other thing I like about the Keep Selected checkbox is that selected lines are ready to edit with the Smooth tool. So let's say you draw a line and it's just about right and you want to add just a little smoothing, then hold Option or Alt to temporarily switch from the paintbrush to the Smooth tool and then run it over your selected path to push it around and smooth it, which is basically removing extra anchor points. That's what the Smooth tool does. Then release Option or Alt and you're back to the paintbrush. So to me, that's two great reasons to use Keep Selected. Now, double clicking the paintbrush to get its options again, you can leave both boxes unchecked or you can only check the Keep Selected checkbox and either way, the paintbrush will behave like you would expect a real drawing tool to behave. You can crosshatch and draw lines on top of lines you've just drawn and it all seems pretty normal. However, the next checkbox, Edit Selected Paths, that's the one you need to be a little wary of because with this checkbox checked, the paintbrush tool becomes a drawing and editing tool all rolled into one. So I can draw a line, it remains selected because Keep Selected is checked, and then I can even add on to it because Edit Selected Paths is checked too. And this can be really helpful. I can even redraw a line over and over again, just pushing it in the direction I want. It's kind of like the Smooth tool. So there is a benefit here, but this is where it can also become a little hard to control. And if I'm doing something like this, just drawing the petals of a flower one after the other, well, then having both checkboxes checked 
can be downright annoying because I'm editing old paths instead of drawing new ones. So you have to manage these two checkboxes based on what you're drawing. And generally, I leave the Edit Selected Path box unchecked unless I know I need it. And one other thing, the Edit Selected Paths option has a tolerance setting. So you can decide just how close to the line your paintbrush tool needs to get in order to edit the line. Okay, and going back to the artboard here, the paintbrush tool by default draws open paths, just lines. If you want to draw a closed path and close up a shape with the paintbrush tool, hold down the Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC while you're drawing, and Illustrator closes the path for you when you release your pen or mouse. And you can even have the shapes you draw take on the fill color you've set in the color panel. To do this, though, you need to go back to the paintbrush options and check Fill new brush strokes, but I'm going to leave this unchecked as I normally do. So these are the settings that you can adjust for the paintbrush tool, and actually these are virtually the same for the other natural drawing tools in Illustrator like the pencil tool, the smooth tool, and even the blob brush. So meet me in the next lesson and we'll talk about the blob brush.